Hey, what's happening everybody? This is Robert the Cowboy Muhammad right here at Premier Leather Crafters and today what we're going to talk with you about is inlaying, inlaying leather. Now traditionally to inlay you would take two pieces of leather and you would glue them together. Well you'll take one solid piece then you'll cut, do your cutouts with a knife on another piece and then you'll glue those pieces together and you'll have something in between those two pieces being an exotic skin such as snake, alligator, or even just a different piece of leather itself with some different types of design and or coloring on there, uh, felt, or what have you. But what I'm going to talk about you today is my own personal way of inlaying, which I thought, uh, to me, um, is a lot more economical, a lot more beneficial, a lot less work, uh, and it makes your work look just just as good the same as having those two pieces. Now, even over a period of time when you're gluing those two pieces together, contact smitting those two pieces together, they'll still have a tendency to come apart. So it will reveal that your inlay is two pieces. The most beautiful thing you can do to an inlay piece, I think, is to have just one piece and it's solid. All the way around. So now let's get off into it. The tools that we are uh, going to use is our swivel knife with a guide on it. And we're going to use uh, a bevel tool to uh, use that a little bit. There's my beveler. Beveler there. And we're going to use our handy dandy modeling tool. Small end on one and large end on the other. I think you guys can tell I've been watching Blues Clues too with a handy dandy. But you know, I got small children. But anyway, let's get off into this. Um, I already have a piece that's complete and done. and But we're going to show you how to do this. We're just using our uh, swivel knife and guide and our modeling tool and, and our background and tool, or our bevel tool. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut... Not cut, but we're going to mark one line on both sides of that. And again, we're just using one piece of leather, which this is an 8 to 9 ounce. And we're not really going to make that a bold marking, but just good enough for us to see it. You guys can see that? Just a bold part. Now, what I'm going to show you today is this is as if you're inlaying a belt. However, this technique can be used on any piece that you're inlaying. You don't need those two pieces on there. It makes it bulky. You know, that's what I think. So, um, we're going to scab that or mark that in there. And then we're going to take our guide. And we're going to move this about an eighth of an inch. And this little remarkable little jewel here, man, is the best thing. Uh, somebody could have made. Now, you can do this whether you have a wing divider or what have you, or an edge, any type of edge border. And we're going to mark that again with two lines, a separate line. Now, what we're going to do this time also, we're going to wet this in on both sides of our belt blank. And we're really going to put a bold cut into this, which is another thing that I like about this little um, X piece piece here is it'll only allow you to cut so far into the leather itself. So you don't have to worry about really cutting it in half. It's only going to go as far as this part of the tool is going to let you. I guess you guys can see that. That's as far as you're going to cut, which is perfect for inlaying. Now we're gonna cut chop this end off. I'm just gonna cut this off with my with my knife here. Because we just want you guys to see how we do this. Then we're gonna take our bevel tool and we're gonna bevel this back a little bit. A lot. That's why we decided to wet it. We're gonna beat that back a lot. Right there. Take your time. And the reason I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you the reason why we're going to bevel this. Now, this will eliminate 
Let me stop beating so you can hear me. This beveling this back a little bit will eliminate putting a filler uh, behind your snake skin or behind whatever piece um, you're you're doing um, that you want to inlay. So we're just going to bevel that back real good, and I'll show you what this is going to do as we apply it to inlay. Great. Now, can you guys see that? This is a raised lip right here on the edge, our border edge on both sides. That's why we bevel that. And then it causes that nice rounded oval shape. So when we get ready to inlay this, it's going to make that snake skin come out. Now, we're just going to use just a regular piece of old scrap snake that I had left over from a previous belt that we inlaid for a customer. And... to worry about over time two pieces of leather separating. So now what we're going to do is take our modeling tool, small in, and that lip, that raised portion that we just beveled down, so it should look kind of like this. It's rounded off and then that straight edge puts on the edge of the border. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our border knife and or our modeling tool and we're going to just cut back that edge part right there the same way as if you're doing the lift technique with your mule foot. But we're going to use our modeling tool to get up under that edge. Now, you guys remember that first line that we cut uh, on the edge of the belt? That's our guide line or our guide so we know how far to use our modeling tool to go back. That way we don't cut this end off or we don't push through to the side of the belt. So we're just gonna use our modeling tool just to go back to that line. And you wanna take your time. You're not digging deep. You just wanna get back to that line. And we're gonna do this on both sides of the belt. Just make that initial cut into that end. Take your time, and you can see, actually, let me show you. You see where our first line is? This is our modeling tool that's sticking in there. So that's as far as we want to go with this. That's as far as we want to go. And we're going to do this all the way down. Now, if you was doing a complete belt, you would do this all the way down the belt. Now, I do not recommend you're using a knife to do this with as opposed to the modeling tool because a knife, you're cutting. And actually with the modeling tool, we're just gouging out a little bit and it's not really sharp. So it's only gonna take back just a little bit that it needs to, all right? Now this is ready. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take, uh, you will prep this belt the same way you would prep any other piece. You know, and what we're going to do, we're going to dye this black real quick, just so you'll know. And you can dye it whatever color your skin is. And we're using Phoebe's, Phoebe's M USMC Black. I'm going to edge those off. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to dye the edges. Because the interior portion is going to be inlaid. Now, to make it more uniform and comfortable, you can go ahead and possibly go down just a little bit. Just so you can make sure that the dye gets on every part of it. And what it's going to look like, ladies and gentlemen, is this right here. That's what you're going to look use. We're going to set that off to the side because I already have some prep pieces. And we're just going to buff that, get that up there a little bit. Now, once you get set that far, you're going to take the large end of your spoon or your modeling tool. And we're going to do this on a quarter turn. And we just want to pull this down the side of our bevel to part. And it's a quarter turn. Just to raise that up. So basically, it's kind of like combining the lift technique 
and the inlaying technique in one. All right, cool. So we're just gonna raise that up a little bit just to get it to pick up. Now, what's happening is we're taking the pieces that, that we gouged out a little bit and we're raising those up kind of like a little bridge type opening. And now this allows us to take our inlay piece. Now, what I would recommend you guys do is take you a ruler. Don't make fun of my pink ruler. It's my daughter's, okay? So, I would advise you to take a ruler, and what you're doing is measuring those outside lines, which here is measuring to be an inch and an eighth. So, that's what we're going to cut our snake skin down to is one inch, one and an eighth inch. And we'll mark that, draw a line, cut your skin, and you should come up with a piece like this. And after you glue this, I like to use um, the barges. And actually, I have just the tube here, but you can get the, the barge. The bar. I've been doing them so long, I know how to control it now. But just to be on the safe side, get the barge can contact cement with the brush. That way you can control where you don't. Uh, don't over glue on the sides of the edge. That would really make it a bad piece, okay? So we're going to glue both sides of our snake and that. And you're just going to work a little piece at a time. And we're going to tuck one end of that snake in. It's going to tuck one end. Now the other portion, we're going to roll that a little bit. I think you can see that. And we're going to set that in. So you should have a little raised piece like this. That's great as of right now. Now, before you commit to this, because we all know if you use contact cement, once that other side touches, you're married. So it's there. It's not a oops or oops. You can't fix that. But what we're going to do, once we get that raised portion in there, we're going to take the back side of our spoon and we're going to push that all the way down up under that raised portion of our inlay. And it will look now like so. Huh? There it is. Now, once you get there, you're just going to take those edges and pull those down. Now, you have to be careful and mindful about the direction and the flow of the scales on the snake, especially if you're doing snake, because when they put the when you're putting the belt in the belt loops, you don't want to start pushing it through the wrong way because it'll make your scale start to flake up. Generally, most men when they get ready to they'll put their belt on pretty easy, but when they take it off, they just want to snatch it out like a sword type deal. So you, I make my scales go toward the tip, opposite end of the buckle. So that way when they pull it out, all the scales are laying flat and that's cool. Then what we're going to do, once you get to that point, now we want to bring those edges down that we raised up and we, we modeled back a little bit, molded back a little bit. Uh, we want to bring those edges back down. So I would tell you to take a bone slicker and what we're going to do is just go down the edges. Now, what this is also doing this is also making that glue spread while it's still a little wet and not dry. And it's making it spread. So as it spreads, it's pulling those edges, basically it's just shoving the glue back up around the tight top part of it just a little bit. And it's making it spread. And we just wanna go again, smooth that out with our slicker and just go down the sides of the belt until we get it the way we want it. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, our very own one-piece inlay belt. And you can apply this to anything, be it knife sheaths, gun holsters, guitar straps, whatever you want to do. That's what you want to do. Just make sure you cut that double line that allows you to know how far to gouge that back out. And even if you want to larger pieces, I would even go back maybe a quarter of an inch. That way, if you want to come back with your um, embossing wheel, which, there it is, you can come back with your embossing wheel. Ah, 
always keep your tubes handy. But you can come back with your embossing wheel in that first line where you will normally stitch those two pieces of leather together. I would take my embossing wheel and just sit, go back over that first line just to simulate a stitch. And then that way, it gives that appearance that a stitch is there, but it's not really there. Hey, thank you guys for watching and staying around with me. I got to get back to work. Hope that helped you out and play around with it. But it is the one uh, um, technique that I know, and I've watched several videos out here on YouTube. I've been to several classes, learned from several different crafters, and generally most people are still doing the two-piece inlay. But there's a first. I'm not going to say it's mine and mine alone. I'm just telling you, hey, I haven't seen anybody else who do it. So I hope that helped you guys out. Come back. Stay with me next time. This is the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters.